again my <laughs> this is where I get back to another rousing episode of Around the Diamond. You got Grand Slam Sam and Baseball Bill here coming to you back on Saturday. Excited to talk to you about some just some baseball, just some general baseball things. Nothing crazy has happened. You know, we had one major signing last week. It's not like we had another major signing to the Dodgers. Oh, no, that's not true. We did. We'll talk about it. As always, Baseball Bill, how are you doing on this fine Saturday morning? I am great. I'm wearing the Santa Claus hat because the fat guy's going to slide down the chimney soon, possibly. Um, Sam's oh. wearing his fourth place Giants hat. Um, for the next 10 years, it'll be fourth place or, or worse. We'll um, see. You know, and so we'll, we'll see. see. We'll so see how just fine. I mean, we'll we'll see how many. I mean, the Giants won three World Series in 10 years, and they were projected mm -hmm. to be in fourth place. Uh, anyway, let's just get into it. Let's not waste any time. There really was only one signing after the big one that we'll talk about. Shelby Miller did sign a one-year contract. Uh, he's going to Detroit for a year. Club option um for the second year but that was really the only one but we're just gonna really talk real quick about some crazy free agents mm -hmm. oh wait there's a lot of free agents a lot of free agents what? a lot of free agents i mean i know we we showed this slide on our most recent show which was only a couple of days ago um but now that a major signing has been done do you think some of these starting pitchers are going to come more to fruition quicker? Uh, yeah, I'm actually surprised they haven't, Sam, to be honest with you. I, obviously, you know, Clayton Kershaw, he'll probably sign with the Dodgers, uh, but he won't be available till August. Um, but some of the other ones, Blake Snell, Josh Hader, uh, Marcus Stroman, yeah, I'm surprised. Hunjin Ryu, I'm surprised that they've lasted this long. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you think it was more them wanting to wait for the one signing that just happened? Or do you think it was just these other teams? Do you just think? I don't know. I mean. Team you're... kind of asked them to kind of hold. No, I don't think people are looking at it and saying, oh, gee, I, Shohei got X. No, if I'm Marcus Stroman, I'm not looking at it going, Shohei got X number of dollars. I should get that. Because you're not as good as as Shohei, so right. no, I, you know, teams might have been waiting to see if they could sign Shohei or the one that we're going to talk about in a little bit today. But no, I I don't think I think most of these players know that their market value is is what it is, and that they want most of these guys want longer than one year deals, right? Right. If you're Jock Peterson, you've been bouncing around for the last three years, ever since he left the Dodgers. Right. And so you're looking for some place where you can play for three or four years. Right. right. So that um, way you can establish a home. No, no, that makes total sense. And I think that's what, I, I think that's a big, honestly, I think that was one of the biggest reasons why Shohei didn't want to leave. LA again we talked about this the other day he's already developed a home there in LA he's been there for five years he's already has a house he has friends he has family there already there to up and move to the to North California you know even being all you're moving your entire life it so it makes a lot of sense now obviously we can't compare some of these players to Shohei Otani there's no player on earth that we could compare to a Shohei Otani. Honestly, honestly, right now there is not one. There will be another, I'm sure, in the next 10 years. There will be another Shohei Otani-esque type player. Um, But I'm thinking more in line with the guy who just recently signed. Mm, yeah. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disagree with you on the Shohei. Do you think some of these start out? Like I'm going to disagree with you on the Shohei thing. Um, Shohei is a generational player. Um, yes, we'll find people that can hit like Shohei in the next 10 years, but to play both sides, to be an MVP like that, we won't ever see that again. It's not going to happen. Maybe not in our lifetime. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> not, not going to happen. It, it, I, I mean, not in our lifetime. It'll probably be, you know, a generation, two generations, three generations from now. 
Yeah. Well, I think show I think what Shohei has done has opened up the eyes probably of some pitchers to say, mm-hmm. man, if I just really put some diligence behind batting, maybe I could be the next Shohei. So you don't think Shohei is going to inspire current pitchers to maybe want to expand their abilities? Yeah, expand their abilities more to yeah. maybe be more yes. in that. But, I'm not saying yes. they're going to be Shohei, but at but least expand You either themselves. have the talent for it or you don't. And you you can learn to hit. Can you learn to hit all sides of the field with pop and, and hit 97 mile an hour fastballs? No. It's not. I if I'm a if I'm a PO, a pitcher only, right? I'm not looking at Shohei's contract. If I'm in single A going, I, I want to go to the cages. I want to learn how to hit. I want to learn how to expand because I want a seven hundred million dollar contract. It doesn't nah. It's I you know, if anything, MLB is trying to get away from any pitcher hitting except for Shohei. I can see that. So do you think when Shohei retires, they'll re- they'll remove the Shohei rule? No. <laughs> no, because no, because you might end up having a pitcher come in to to pitch in an extra inning game. It might be a 12, 13, 14 inning game late That's in the true. season. And if you remove that Shohei rule, then you've you've got yourself some trouble. Yeah. Right? No, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. So kind of going back to it though, if you're comparing pitchers to Pete, if you're comparing some of the free agent pitchers that are still available to Strictly POs. I mean, look at the guy who we're going to talk about in a couple mm-hmm. of minutes. I mean, right. he's a PO only. Would right. you say like, like, so you wouldn't think a young award winner is close to the caliber of a guy who hasn't even pitched in MLB yet, but just got a lucrative contract? Well, see, so when we get to him, I'll answer that question. How's that? Because okay. that's a that's very, fair. very good question. That's a very, very good question. And and there's a lot of folks saying, how does he get that kind of cash? Right. Remember what he did in the World Baseball class. Remember what he's done in the Japanese League. So it's not like he hasn't faced MLB-style hitters. Um, I mean, he was mowing people down in the World Baseball Classic, but nobody was paying attention because he was teammates with Shohei Ohtani. That makes sense. No, I completely agree. You. I'll get to it. Looking at some more free agents, though, real quick. Here's just some. Here's a, like I'd say almost second esque tier of free agents. Mm-hmm. Not really second esque, but still not that top caliber that we saw on that first page. Because I think if you if you compare this page to the last page, the first page is tier one. This is tier two. Um, are there guys on here that you think will? get picked up quicker than some of the guys on that first page? Um, yes. Uh, I'm surprised that Matt Chapman has not signed yet. I'm surprised that Reese Hopkins has not signed yet. Um, the market value for AJ Pollock and Alex Wood is way overvalued. I'm surprised that Eva Longoria hasn't signed an 100%. extension with, 100%. Um, with the Diamondbacks. Um, and and I think it was probably, and I don't know Justin Turner. I've never met him. I hear he's a fantastic dude, and I hope at some point in my life to meet him and find out how super mm-hmm. fantastic he is. But I'm surprised <laughs> that he took that opt-out option. I, If I were a betting man, and again, I don't know anything, but if I were a betting man, I would bet you that he saw all the Dodgers reunion and thought maybe we're going to do a Dodgers reunion tour. Um, and then the Dodgers were so focused on getting Shohei Otani uh, that Justin Turner kind of fell by the wayside and they're not going to pay Justin. And so Justin's a man without a team. And that's so. Yeah. So do you. I mean, there is always the option Turner could go back to Boston. Uh, Boston's not that Boston's not Minnesota. Boston's not going to take you back. I mean, like you Minnesota need to look for a team, I guess, that's looking that needs a veteran that needs veteranship at that corner slot. The Mets do, but he's not going back to Queens either. Yeah, that's true. You don't want to go to Queens. Um, 
I agree. I think AJ Pollock and Alex Wood's market value is greatly over over done. Um Alex Wood's good pitcher, but he's not a $23 million a year pitcher. Not even close. Um, yeah. AJ Pollock has passed his prime, um, gets injured. So I'd probably cut that by, I, I wouldn't say too much, but I'd probably say around seven and a half to eight million a year is more in AJ Pollock's wheelhouse than 13 million a year. That's just ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think we said it best the other day that now that some of these bigger, now that the big, what we will constitute as big signings, um, are gone. They're done. So I think we're going to start seeing really Christmas come for baseball fans in the next well, couple. If of you, if, yeah, if you turn back to the page beforehand, there's a couple of names that I think will drop, probably. They might drop before the first of the year, but definitely in the first week in January. So the bottom three on this list right here, Cody, 100%. Blake, and Josh, 100%. Will, will all be gone by the first week of January. I'll even say Marcus will be gone by the first week of January. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's a very, you know, very big possibility. Um, unfortunately, guys like Joey Votto, uh, guys like Justin Turner, guys like Jock Peterson, um, teams are looking to see how much money they have left that they want to spend mm -hmm. and where do they want to spend it and what type of veteran presence do they need? Um, especially when you, when you're a first baseman only pretty much right. that's the position that people can be trained to play. That's the position that when you can't play third base anymore, they move you over to first base yep. when you're or the outfield, you can't pay the yeah. outfield anymore. When your knees aren't good enough as catcher, you're at first base. Buster. Now, that's not taking away from a guy like Freddie Freeman, who's a very talented first baseman. I'm not saying that you don't have to be talented. There's there's guys that can play first base, and then there's talented first basemen. Yes. And so guys That's like, a great way of putting it, actually. Thank you. So there's guys like Joey Votto and and Jock and, and Justin that will be signings in late January, right, where teams are looking and saying, hey, I can fill this hole. Um, and they'll probably be one, two, or three year deals. They're not going to be long term deals. Yeah, I think. Um, and I even even Clayton, as much as I know, Dodger fans are really looking for that reunion with Clayton Kershaw for the year. I wouldn't be surprised if he at least entertained entertained a deal back in Texas. Yeah, he, he's he, from there. He can go home and play for a year around his family. I think it. I think it's something that he's wanted to do. No, he's already said that he's not going to do that. He's either going to oh, retire okay. or resign with the Dodgers. Oh, okay. So well, then, I, good for him. Yeah, no, I agree with you. you. You, yes, that could have been the case, but yeah, he no, he he said if I play this year, it'll be with the Dodgers, and that's. I mean, well, good for him. Stick to your guns. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, I did hear a rumor mill that that Yasmani Grandal um, is going to be signing with the Giants. Um, I don't know if you had heard this rumor, but there was a rumor out there that they're going to sign him to a two year, eight hundred million dollar all deferred contract, um, <laughs> uh, and they're going to defer it out to twenty fifty, and so they're not going to start paying him until twenty fifty. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. Two years, eight hundred million for Yasmani Grandal as a Giant. Yeah, no, never gonna happen. Um, no, no. <laughs> don't need him. Don't need him. I got the Great. future behind the plate, Patrick Bailey. I'm covered. Um, we will keep you updated on all yes. free agency news as we continue this free agency pool excursion. Mm -hmm. Kind of all out there, right. but we did have a big signing this week. The one we've been it's the second one we've been waiting for. Bill is as happy as a kid on his first day of kindergarten. Ooh, I don't know about that, but kid I mean, kids happy. are pretty kids excited on their start. first day How's of that? kindergarten. Kids, I mean, kids are pretty excited on their first day of kindergarten. They don't know what they're getting into yet. That's the problem. Once they realize, yeah. oh man, this is torture for the next like 14 to 16 years, then they're like, this was a bad idea. Yeah, but this... for that, but for that brief moment, that brief moment. They're giddy. <laughs> they're, they're excited. Exactly. 
So, um, so yeah. ask that question to me that you just asked a second ago. Okay. So real quick, Yamamoto, the app, the superstar Japanese ace has signed a 12 year, $325 million contract with the Dodgers pairing up with Joey Otani, 27 million a year. This is nothing deferred to opt out year six and eight. I will now go back and ask the question as Bell has asked. If I were to take a comparison of Yamamoto and put him against pitchers such as Blake Snell, um, I'm I'm not going to go to the extent of saying that this next person is even close to Blake Snell, but even in even adding Marcus Stroman to that type of a conversation of a PO only position and their market value. Do you think that guys like that we're waiting for this so they can negotiate for what's valuable for them? Or do you think um, that there's no comparison to a guy that's never pitched a day in MLB? No, I don't think there's any comparison. And I'll, I'll tell you why he was dominant in the Japanese league, which is uh, in some cases equally as good as the MLB. Um, and in some cases better, some cases worse. Right. And so um, he was dominant in the World Baseball Classic as the picture that you're showing here on the screen. He was dominant in the World Baseball Classic. Again, he didn't carry that team because there was this guy on his team named Shohei Otani. Um, who? I think part of the reason why he signed. Wait, who? Who was on the Yeah, team? exactly. Um, part of the reason why we, I think he signed. We should look up Dodgers. some stats on him. Sorry. What's that? <laughs> We should look up some stats on that guy. That that, that yeah yeah in, uh, world decent. baseball classic. I'm really really curious to see how good he is. So, <laughs> so finishing that thought, there is part of the reason why I think he signed with the Dodgers was because he didn't want to be Yamamoto and the Mets come to town or Yamamoto and the Phillies or whatever. He wanted to kind of be able to inch into the MLB. He will always be, you know, Shohei Otani's teammate type thing, right? Because remember, he just signed a 12-year deal. If he plays all 12 years with the Dodgers, and if the Dodgers have Shohei for all 10 years, they're teammates for the next 10 years, right? Right. Um, so you're going to have Dodger dogs and sushi um, in the clubhouse, right? And so <laughs> go to this direction, you get Dodger dogs. You go this direction, you get sushi, right? Um, and so... <laughs> They built the Japanese restaurant in Glen in Camel no in Glendale. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So <laughs> but, but here's here's what I think bodes well to answer your question for guys like Blake Snell, Josh Hader, Marcus Stroman, the guys that are still out on the market. Um is and even even position players, not POs, even position players like Cody Bellinger. Now ownerships know, okay, this guy's off the market. This guy's off the market. I had earmarked $27 million a season for Yamamoto. Now I don't have to worry about that because the Dodgers signed him. Let's go after – now we can offer Blake Snell really what Blake wanted, which was whatever, $24.5 million a year, whatever that number is that Blake's asking for or Cody's asking for. So it does – Baseball's a, a, a business before it's a game, unfortunately, at that level. In our backyards, it's still a game and it's still fun. At right. their level, it's a business, right? And no, so that makes sense. The owners are looking at it and going, okay, now we don't have to worry about Shohei. Now we don't have to worry about Yamamoto. Now we don't have to worry about Tyler Glass now. Right? Yeah. Because look at the Dodgers starting rotation for this next season. Tyler Glass now, Walker Beeler, Yamamoto. Bobby Miller, Emmett Sheehan. And then if all goes well in 2025, it's Shohei, Yamamoto, um, Emmett Sheehan, uh, Bobby Miller, and Tyler Glass now, unless they can re-sign Walker Beeler, right? But if you throw Walker Beeler in the mix with Yamamoto and Shohei in 2025, that's a one, two, three punch that's going to make it really, really difficult for teams I'm going to swallow this real hard, <clears throat> the Giants, to compete, right? Because you come into L.A. and you're going to play three games and you know that you have to pitch or uh, play against those three. Okay. Yeah. So it'll be I mean, 
No, it's definitely going to be interesting, but along with all of these major signings that the Dodgers have done, you know, again, this just goes into looking at future players to sign. I mean, now look, the Dodgers got a got a saving grace with Shohei deferring sixty eight million dollar sixty eight million a year of his contract for ten years, so they've got the ability to sign players over the next ten years. But ten years is going to go by in the blink of an eye, as we all know it typically does, and then all of a sudden you're going to have a debt of seventy million dollars a year. You're going to have to pay out. Yeah, no, every it, year. So which is fine. Which is yeah, fine. I mean, you. I mean, yes. Yes, the money that the Dodger fans are giving to the ownership group for the next 10 years to make out on all the money they're going to get on Shohei Otani's merchandise and stuff like that, it's going to be beneficial to them, no question. But it it's going to come back. It always comes back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're You gonna can't make money. say it doesn't come back. <laughs> they're going to make money hand over fist on it. Um, it's just whether or not you win, right? And so for if you're the owners of any team, you're – What's the first rule in business, Sam? Do you know the first rule in business? No. Stay in business. I mean, it's baseball. They're not not going to stay in business. Oh, you sure? Okay, I, okay. They're not the okay. The Dodgers are not the Oakland Athletics. Let's be honest. That's, yeah, that's true. And so, so the first rule of business is stay in business. The Dodgers are going to make. They are going to pay out between Tyler Glass now. Yamamoto and Shohei Otani over the next 20 years, they're going to pay out one, almost $1.2 billion just in advertising alone in Jersey sales and everything that comes with Yamamoto and comes with Shohei, they'll probably make between three and three and a half billion. So the numbers match out on paper. Now the question becomes, can you win? Right. And, just because, and I was sitting just with a friend last got... night, Sam. Mm-hmm. You Sorry. will love this last night. I was sitting with a buddy last night, and we were talking about the Dodgers. He's a huge Dodger fan. And he says, this reminds me of when Carl Malone signed with the Lakers. Because there was one year where you had Shaq and Kobe on the Lakers, and you had Derek Fisher. But then you had Carl Malone sign, Steve Nash sign, and Gary Payton sign. So you had all-stars at every starting position. The Lakers missed the playoffs. Because the team didn't gel. The team just could not gel. So that being I, said. I I will also say, yes, I agree with you. Last thing on this. But you can't compare basketball to baseball. I don't think you can. Wait a, because... second, wait a second. Aren't they the same sport? Don't they? Don't you, when the person hits the thing, don't you yell goal? <laughs> Am I not? I guess I just don't understand the sport. I'm just saying in comparison, comparing, I I don't see, because the difference in comparing base, I don't like comparing baseball to other sports because the difference, you're working as a team, but still more in an individual capacity than in basketball. In basketball, it truly is a team sport. You have to move the ball around. You've got to set up mismatches. You've got to be able to get guys open. So there's a lot more, need of communication a lot more need to gel in baseball what you really need you need the guys to get along but it's not like there's as much like in play movement going on you need the second baseman to gel with the third to gel with the shortstop you need the third to gel with first you need the pitcher to gel with the catcher you need the outfielders to gel but if the whole team doesn't gel it's not like it's going to cause issues but it would i don't think it would cause as major issues as it would in basketball where if the team didn't gel they wouldn't score ergo the what the two and like 28 Pacers or whoever it is like there's a team that's won two games they've lost like 96 games in the entire seat 2023 like calendar year they've won a total of nine like you get a team like that that doesn't gel on the court it's completely different than you get a team that doesn't gel on the field as long as the pitcher and the catcher are gelling, they're going to be good. If you get the first and third catching on the corners, they're fine. You get short and, you know, so you got a little bit more separation that, you know what I mean? Does that yeah, make sense? Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, no, it makes sense. So, Sam, for the last five minutes that we have of the show here, um, let me ask you, we only have five minutes, so you might want to put that screen back up. Let me ask you one question, and you've got, you've got 30 seconds to answer it, okay? I'm not going to um, like this, am I? What's that? I'm not going to like this, am I? <laughs> <laughs> no, just tell me, just tell me one funny baseball memory that you have. Crying on my couch right over there when I got the notification that Yamamoto signed a 12 year deal with the Dodgers. <laughs> um, no, I think one of my funniest MLB moments wasn't even a moment I watched, uh -huh. I didn't even hear it. Okay, that's how funny this moment was. So I was driving home. I was driving home from work in twenty fourteen. Mm -hmm. Um, that it was playoffs. Giants versus Washington. Eighteen. It was the eighteen inning game. They were in the top of the eighteenth inning in Washington. Um, I'm driving home. I am fifteen minutes from my house. Or my apartment at the time. And uh, I'm listening to the game on MLB on my phone. Like, I have my speaker of my phone pointing up so I can hear it. Because at the time, I didn't have a car that had Bluetooth. So I'm, like, trying to, like, listen to the game while I'm driving home. And it's, like, midnight. And I'm, like, okay, let me get this going. And Brandon Bell comes up to bat and strikes strike and then all of a sudden the pitch is thrown and they're like and the wind up and the pitch and it, my radio my app goes silent on my phone it just goes silent and I'm like what is happening right now and I'm driving so I'm like figuring out what's going on with my phone and I'm like and then all of a sudden I reset I restart the app and I start it up again and then all of a sudden it's like I, that ball was gone it was out of here you couldn't catch it and I'm like I missed the Brandon Belt call for the go ahead home run in the top of the 18th inning of the Washington Nationals Giants playoff game I was so sad. That's it was a sad but funny moment. It was Probably really just... sad but funny because I'm like, well, we won. Well, we got it. <laughs> At least we're over this. So um so what do we got going on this week? What do we got going on this week? Um, I don't know. What do you got going on this week? Wait, let me ask you real quick. What's one of your funniest baseball memories? What do we got going on this week? Oh, I doesn't want to talk about it. So Wednesday, uh well, you I, tell me I I had said that Mikey was gonna be on this Friday. He's actually on them Wednesday. Uh Brian, uh, who's a Phillies fan, was actually on, on Friday. We have the Battle for Texas Ladies style on Thursday night. We got two Rangers and two Astro fans ready to duke it out. And then on Friday, we got a surprise guest coming in. Uh, more to come on that. That's going to be a lot of fun. ITL this week is Wednesday is Stadium Food Girl. Val is going to talk to us about food and um, she's going to play Would You Rather. So it's going to be a lot of fun. AJ from Bleacher Brothers. I was just on his radio show, the Tony Bruno Network show this last week. And then Mets Meg's got her peeps on this coming Friday. So that is the schedule. And let's go to Vegas. We're Vegas going. It's less than a month away now, Sam. I know. I'm excited. It's less than a month away. What I news mean, you got for it, though? What's that? What news you got about it? Uh, we are going to start bringing out the news this week on it. Uh, but don't forget, register top 10 if you're not locker room access. Make sure you get your locker room access. Use ATB, all caps. Get yourself 10% off. You so, got to sign up now. Because the info is coming out and you don't want to miss it. As always, make sure you are checking out TopFanRivalry.com for new articles, new podcasts, and new merch on the reg. Bill, any final comments for the fans out there? Nope, that's it. Let's have a all good right. one. Merry Christmas, all. 
Merry Christmas, and we'll see you on the field next week.